is. What is it that you are trying to teach people, show people, help people find? What is this all about? I just think it's peace of mind, being a living demonstration of peace of mind, just living in the present moment, learning to trust in higher self, God, um, higher power, whatever people feel comfortable um, calling uh, their source or the, the, pure, the peace within. And then we just flow along with it and um, travel along and just share ideas about forgiveness, about how to forgive, about how to let go of uh, judgments and grievances and hurts and pains. Why is that important? Just for the peace of mind, just because the peace of mind and grievances don't go together or, or hurts and pains and um, struggles are, are part of a, an illusion of, uh, you might say, duality, where the mind is struggling to survive and struggling to um, reconcile things and to, to make its way through the world when peace of mind is more of a surrender into the moment and trusting that if we listen to our inner guide that everything will be provided and everything will be peaceful. Okay. So that's really what we do. Which is probably very difficult for a lot of people. It's kind of giving up some of that control. <laughs> yeah. How did you get involved in this? Well, I've uh, been on a spiritual path since 1978 when I first discovered A Course in Miracles. Um, I've also done other paths along the way, but um, 15 months ago I met David and realized that he was taking the course to a very, very deep level that I had encountered before. In so terms of what? Uh, well, actually, A Course in Miracles has some pretty radical ideas in it, which... Um, and other groups that I had been in, those ideas are kind of just brushed aside, like God did not create the world or there is no world. Those mm-hmm. are both ideas that are in the Course. Yeah. So um, I, I was very uh, interested and intrigued by what I was hearing, and David had tapes of old gatherings from years ago. Um, and I would go for walks, and I would listen to hours and hours of these tapes. Of David's would, tapes? Of David's tapes. And I would go sit at the kitchen table with him, and I was hearing the identical message, and that really amazed me. Did he keep it? <laughs> that he is saying consistent. Mm-hmm. The consistency is it's a very um, profound witness yes. to constant peace and constant joy. So I said, I want more of that. Oh, it's oh, for me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's available to all of us, yes, yes. I think. Huh? Yes. And that's the whole teaching, that it's, it's available. It's right there. It's in your heart. It's just covered over by concepts and beliefs and uh, that really need to be just looked at and questioned. And then when you start to just question what you believe and you're open to a, a new direction, uh, it guides you to trust more in the present moment and that you don't need to use your past learning to survive. You can use your intuition and in listening to, to God within yourself to, to be in joy and happiness. I get a lot better information, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Very informed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, very informed. Now, I attended your gathering last night, and one of the things that you were saying is that you that this was an experiential event for you. That, that there's one thing about theology and reading theology and studying theology, but it's not the same as living it. Is that is that where you're coming from with this? And what I heard Russ is saying. Yeah, yeah. The theology, the concepts, they're they're like launching pads, kind of like with a sending a rocket, you know, into space. You gotta have a good launch, and it's, and everyone has to start somewhere. So there are many theologies, many philosophies. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you're listening to, does it, or does it? Um, what happens is you, you go along and you really have to get in touch with the inner voice, and there are so many, uh, uh, there are many paths to God in form, but we could say that the content of all religions point to that peace of mind, to that inner peace. Mm-hmm. That's really what the, the religion is about. It's really not about forms and rituals, and those can be helpful. Yeah, buildings, I mean, forms, rituals, buildings, groups, organizations, those could be stepping stones. But then the deeper you go into it, the more you start to see that it's a living experience and that you don't try to organize it or um, make a structure out of it. You just let it flow through you and uh, radiate through you. And it just changes your perception of the world from looking for grievances and looking to blame somebody or looking to pin scapegoat somebody for something so you realize that the hurt or the, uh, the the deep guilt that you had been carrying was just a misperception in your mind and you're able to let that go and it feels wonderful then. 
And you've used the Course in Miracles to kind of help get you launched. Is that right? That was kind of yeah. you both. And, and I, I too have studied the Course in Miracles for a mm-hmm. long time. It does. It changes your reality. So it's where you are is not where you were. Yeah. But how how does it do that? Well, it's just a reflection of your mind's desire. So really, um, the Course, like any path, if you really have a desire to heal, um, whether you're using the Course or another modality or the Bible or if you or into nature, Taoism, and and there's many different Mm -hmm. tools. It doesn't matter. But if you really have that desire to heal, then you're willing to let those repressed memories and repressed um, unconscious emotions and and beliefs come to the surface. And then you're able to let those thoughts go when, when you're not even aware of them, that they're dictating your experiences on this earth. Then then it's like you're more like a robot that's just being run through an unconscious uh, computer program. But when you're allowed to, when you give your mind permission to let those come up and really take a look and question them, then it's very empowering because you're not at the mercy of those unconscious beliefs. Is it very scary? It can seem that way, you know, when you are, you're opening your mind to what seems to be the unknown. Which is just yourself. (laughs) Right, which is just yourself and and God. But but, but this world of duality and multiplicity and fragmentation has become, the mind's become so accustomed to it that now it thinks that there's going to be some big sacrifice, that it's going to have to give up what it knows to go into the unknown. And in one sense, it is a letting go of, of what seems familiar for a very joyful experience, which is just coming back to the present moment. Now, music plays a part in this, too. Huh, Rasa? For you, at least, and maybe for many people, um, because music is so powerful, and I did hear you sing last night, and mm-hmm. it's beautiful. But how, did the, how does the music fit into this whole experience for you? Well, actually, exactly at the same time in 1978 that I started the course, I also started hearing songs, receiving songs, and I'm not musically trained, so it was all from the inner that I had to learn. So there's been hundreds of songs over the years, but every experience, every flushing up, every forgiveness, uh, every lesson seemingly turns into another song. And um, it was like, I always think in terms of the process of like scrubbing windows, you know, so I'm a window washer, basically, that's what I do. I'm washing the window of the mind. And then every time that I clean some more away, more light comes through, and it comes for me in the form of songs, mostly. So since I met David, there's been like 90, 95 new songs that have come through that window of the mind because there's been such intense cleansing going on. (laughs) And, I mean, you you feel safe with this, I'm I'm taking it, that this is not a difficult process. I've had many years doing this, yes, I do, (laughs) but it's... Definitely doesn't feel comfortable when the stuff is coming, but it always feels wonderful. It's like you know having the baby mm-hmm. analogy mm-hmm. feels wonderful after it. And I think it's important for people to know so that they can feel this fear. Okay. And, and of course, does you have this whole idea of love and fear and that kind of a duality thing. So what is that all about? Well, it's kind of like going through the darkness to the light, or people will say, i got to make it through the tunnel to the light at the end of the tunnel, Mm -hmm. that uh, the course is really not a course in like trying to sugarcoat and and use affirmations over the top of the conscious beliefs to try to kind of like affirm your way into into a state of bliss and happiness. But it's more um, the introduction basically saying that this is a course, not a course on teaching the meaning of love, but on removing the obstacles to the awareness of love's presence. And you could say that of all the wonderful spiritualities of the perennial wisdom, that it's really uh, going through the darkness, letting it come up, and then handing it over to the spirit and saying, this is not serving me, any, me anymore. I want peace and happiness. And these unconscious beliefs are, are blocking and, and covering and shrouding this happiness from my awareness. So it takes a lot of willingness to take the lid off, so to speak, and, and then let whatever needs to come up, come up. So do you feel like what you're doing now is, is your life's work? Yeah, it feels like it's the life work for myself and for the whole universe in the sense that um, that I feel like there are, people come to it in different ways and the Spirit guides them to to open to this in many, many different ways. But it feels like it, it is my life's work. And but you get, you're and dedicating it. your life to traveling around the world and teaching, huh? It seems that way. There are times when I've been off in my hermitage experiences where I'm just in a state of 
peace and quiet, and I feel it's it's equally valuable. It's just it, it looks a little different. When I'm out gallivanting around and doing seemingly public gatherings and meeting hundreds and thousands of people and sharing these ideas, that's one aspect of the way it looks. And then when I'm in deep meditation for long periods of time or playing with my little three-legged cat and four-legged cat, uh, you know, doing whatever, mm-hmm. it's a state of mind. And so it does kind of take it out of the connotation of, of um, travel because I really don't see myself necessarily as a traveler. I just stay in the present moment. And some, one time somebody asked me, what's the difference between like a yogi who meditates, we'll say, for 16 to 20 hours a day and someone like Mother Teresa who is literally traveling all over the globe and picking people off the streets and working with her sisters of charity and so forth. And I said, in form, there's an enormous difference, but in content, that piece of the yogi, that piece of, of Mother Teresa, the piece of a minister, um, whoever has devoted their life to a peace of mind is really the same. So I don't really identify with the forms. I just stay in the moment. Well, I guess the obvious question for our audience is how do you do that? How do you stay in the moment? Because every moment is okay. I mean, you know, and, and I know that if you stop and you just get to right where you are, you're, you're like really okay no matter what's going on. How do you spend all your time there? Yeah, well, you start to, it takes a lot of trust and it takes miracles because the, the past has taught us that this is a world of scarcity and lack of confrontations and conflicts and and it's like within this world initially when the mind perceives itself it's just trying to survive a lot of time it gets into survival mode and therefore the past is believed is very real and the future it's like you've got to do all these things and plan and be careful that uh, these consequences that happened in the past don't happen again so it's really um, through the ego, you might say that, that the present moment is skipped over because there's so much of a focus on future planning and defending against these kind of negative consequences. So you have miracles, and they start to show you that things work out, synchronicities, like we were talking about at the beginning before we started. The synchronicity starts showing up in your life. Um, things start working out without your effort. You, you start to realize that that there's something else at work here other than this um, personality self is struggling and striving. So the more miracles you have, the more your trust level goes up. Which is part of the function of miracles, right? Yes, to, to increase your trust level. Because you're never going to be able to let go of fear unless you have trust in something else to put your faith in. So theologies can talk about God, but this it has to be a living experience before you're willing to little by little let go of that past learning and come to present trust. So how did you do it? Did you just kind of like begin handing it over gradually, or did you have like a big aha moment? And it's like, you know, this is really this is really it. This really works. Uh, there was many, many, many miracles, and it just seemed to seem to occur over years where there was lots of big aha moments. But, but then there comes a point when you really feel the safety to just really surrender and say, okay, this, this can be my life's purpose and that I don't need to be concerned about the details. And that's what I was told when I was working with the Course, when I was listening to Jesus, Holy Spirit, was saying, he was saying, I will handle the details. If you'll give me your mind to use for working miracles, Christ said, I'll work the miracles through you, and, and I'll handle all the details. And with that kind of an offering, you know, it's, it's, it's quite easy to say yes to, and that's what I did. And it turns out to work. It's yes. true. Oh yeah, that's the, that's the, I would say the proofs in the pudding kind yeah, of thing. When yeah. you really have the experience of that joy just bubbling up and, and it becomes consistent, then you say, well, okay, this this is serving me. And then fear really seems like a distant memory. Yeah, fear it's and just anger. like gone, but, huh? Yeah. It's like not there. It's not like you got rid of it. It's just it's not there. Yeah, as if it was never there. Yeah. I mean, it feels the joy feels so strong. It feels like Christ has always been present, and the fear has has, has been the stranger. And now it's like a distant stranger. Mm-hmm. How is all this experience for you, Resta? Um, well, it's kind of like David David used the analogy of if if you're willing, it's like a water slide. The trick is not to hang on with your fingernails as you're going down the water slide. The trick is to relax and surrender and let the spirit carry you. So it for me it has been the developing of trust. But what's been wonderful, especially on this trip, we've been on the road now for a little over a month. Um, is the witnesses coming forth and people exploding in joy and finding the peace and joining in purpose and like 
just suddenly shaking themselves and waking up and discovering their gifts. And every place that we've been, every gathering, there's been so much joy and so much laughter. And even when people have painful things seemingly coming up or realizations about things that they've been stuck in, and they share it with all of us, and we all laugh it away. You know, the belly laughs just (laughs) dissolves it all away. And so it's just so beautiful to see each one beginning to wake up, ignite, shine. So um, I, I feel it's a privilege of the way that people open their homes to us and open their hearts and minds to us. It's really beautiful. Well, your message is important, but I'm just, how did you end up here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we, um, I have a, a website, awakening-mind.net, and then I believe the Grant, who Grant, lives here, he, right. he was on the, found the website and uh, was on a global mailing list that I have called Awakening in Christ, and and was reading the messages, and before he knew anyone that was really into the course, he was able to connect and, and feel the love and support uh, through the Internet that way, which is kind of a fun thing nowadays because people can do it right huh? anywhere, and <laughs> you could be on a, an island and have little access to an Internet and then, you know, really receive a lot that way. So uh, I just put out on my global mailing list that I'd be, you know, traveling through from Texas and working my way over through uh, towards Florida, and he said, why don't you come and, and stop and do a gathering? And so he worked with uh, Kathy at our Peace House in Cincinnati to set it up, and here we are. We set it up. Wonderful. Now we put your website on the screen, so you might have more. <laughs> what is your Peace House? What is that? Oh, it's a little house uh, that was built in 1847 uh, in Cincinnati. It looks like a little gingerbread house with little green shingles, and, uh, and it's a place where we have... Uh, computers so we can extend a lot uh, pretty much with a global ministry that way and a lot of peace and joy we have a couple of kitty cats there as i mentioned the three-legged one and the four-legged one and and people come and visit us for for quiet retreats or to just have heart-to-heart discussions and so forth and we kind of spring forth from there and uh so we're traveling a lot but it's a lot of times it's just nice to have a quiet place to pray and meditate and to receive visitors is okay. we're so warmly you know, received where we go and taken into people's homes. So, so that your home base is actually the Peace House in Cincinnati, and you go out from there. Is that? I'm, yeah, if people gonna... wanted to write to us, they could write to us there. Or that people sometimes would say, "Where do you? Where's your postal mailing address? Mm-hmm. If, if you like, you're living in the state of the Kingdom of Heaven. Where's your postal mm-hmm. mailing address on Earth? And at this point, you know, that's just a place that we've used as a central point for us. Yeah, because you know, we do. <laughs> we do need to send it there. Um, what are some of the major um, tenets of the Course in Miracles? I and mean, what are some of the teachings in there that, that can help to direct people watching today? Well, the first one that comes to mind is that that God and love are real, and that that is uh, you might call it eternity, um, infinite. You know, these are qualities and characteristics of reality, and that the the perceptual world of the time space cosmos is ever changing. It's it's finite. It's it had a beginning, it'll have an end. It, it's always in flux and change. And so the Course teaches you to come to the present moment, which is really the gateway to eternity. And the present moment would be your point of power or your point of forgiveness where you could loosen your mind from the illusions. So the teachings of the Course are really on forgiveness. And complete forgiveness would be atonement. So when we talk about someone like Jesus Christ, Jesus was simply one who who recognized the face of Christ, who awoke from the dream of the world. And now it's just this beautiful, gentle voice, uh, very synonymous with the Holy Spirit in the mind that, that guides the mind to wake up from from a dream of, uh, of a nightmare of sin and guilt and sickness, fear, pain, so forth. So what role does forgiveness play in this whole thing? It's the key point. In other words... Um, you said that, but I don't think people understood, understood it. I think you really need to drive it home. Yeah. Um, forgiveness is, is, is forgiving the illusion is what it's about. In other words, we were starting to talk about this last night, that you don't need to forgive the truth. You need to forgive illusions. So when you feel a grievance and a hurt coming up about what somebody said or did to you or what somebody didn't say or didn't do. Or what think, maybe you think they might have said they or they're going to say. Right. <laughs> you, you even think they're, yeah. they're about. Those thoughts are all involved with the ego or guilt, and those need to be released or forgiven. So you might say that um, another way of coming at it would be to say that your mind is very powerful and your mind is, is very causative. 
so that the the because your mind actually does co-create with God. So if you're co-creating, you're making stuff happen, right? Well, in heaven, we co-create with God in the sense that God created Christ and Christ has creations. But in terms of this world, it really is about forgiving the projections, forgiving, attempting to hurl the guilt out onto persons, places, things, and to blame and point the finger, bringing it back to your mind and starting to realize that, gee, I've done this thing to myself, and now I want it undone. Okay, but so, it doesn't include beating yourself up, or does it? No, it doesn't. I mean, that would be the ego. It would say, you know, bring it back, and, okay, you did this to yourself, and you're guilty. It says, bring it back, take the projection off of off of the body, off of your brothers and sisters, bring it back to your mind, and quickly give it over to the Holy Spirit. Give it over to the light. Let it be undone by bringing the darkness to the light. So that's a key, the key point there is forgiveness is, is giving it over to the Holy Spirit. And how do you do that? Willingness. You just have to be willing. Um, that was the point that was brought up, and you brought it up at the gathering last night, that if you're willing, if you just have a little willingness to do it, with the power of all the Holy Spirit, the universe with you, then it, it ignites this transformation of mind. But it does, that little willingness takes a lot, and, and as you do it consistently, then you might say that your mind develops a great willingness to see that all things work together for good, and that every event that seems to happen is gently planned for your waking, and also that, that there's a way of looking at it without judgment or fear. And at that point, you can live in a state of peace and joy. Always. Yes. You know, not just only a good day. It's just always. Yes. You could call that salvation. You could call that enlightenment. You could call that self-realization. But that's the state of mind that, that it's a joyful, happy dream where you're looking upon the world through happy eyes, you know, through peace and forgiveness. And you're really not looking then to get anything back from the world. You're just sort of letting the love of God pour through you and shine. And it's like bringing a blanket of peace to the whole world. And it's really a blessing. And as you travel, are you finding the same kind of experiences are happening for you, Rasta? Are you finding more peace, more joy, more trust, and all those kinds of things? Absolutely. It's like the songs are all about the peace. And they seem to come from within me, from that place of peace and joy. And it's almost like messages from my inner self to that which seems to experience the world. And it's always reassuring and gentle. And uh, we do... We do uh, give all kinds of things away. We live totally by divine providence. And so if ones come to the website, they can get CDs, they can get tapes or CDs of David's um, past gatherings or the ones that we do on the road. We're able to put them right up on the web now, like the one last night mm -hmm. we recorded that will, David will go back to the Peace House, put that up on the web. Um, so all kinds of resources on that website for people who want to learn more about coming to this piece. And you, um, you have CDs. You have mm -hmm. beautiful CDs. Since last um, June, there's been eight CDs actually. See here, what a second, huh? Look this is another miracle <laughs> here. I guess just because, of course, the miracles is like a common thread here. I mean, it's a book that 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 you, that you both read. Um, it might be something that our audience is interested in. Can you tell us a little bit about the book or where, what it is or how you get it or anything like that in the last couple of minutes that we have? Yeah, you can uh, purchase it at most large bookstores and chains. Uh, you've got places to write online and, and get it at bookstores that are online. Um, and it's just uh, about 1,200 and some odd pages um, with a text and a workbook and a teacher's manual. So it's like Jesus just saying, I know that you've got some guilt and fear that you're dealing with. I know you've got some struggles and tribulations and trials in this world, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world, and I'm going to give you a roadmap. And here's, here's your roadmap. Here's a text to, to give you some ideas of the metaphysics that will be helpful for you. Those will be helpful in applying the workbook. So taking those one lesson a day for 365 days to go through the mind, healing, and transformation. And then a manual for teachers for those that are called to share peace as their life's work. Um, some of the questions and, and difficulties that come up, uh, Jesus gives real direct answers to a lot of those questions. Okay. Are you using Jesus? Do you feel like this, the source of this information is Jesus? Is that kind of what I'm... I mean, yeah, you could say uh, the Christ mind, the Christ uh, consciousness, yeah. Christ consciousness um, is coming through. In other words, uh, the spirit has to use the symbols of the world, and words are definitely of the world but the spirit can use those as, as signposts to point to an experience of the present moment. 
So in that sense, you could say that Jesus or the Christ spirit is coming through and using it. And so that's where we're coming from. We're out of time, but the, it is available. The book is available. Their website uh, address is on our, on our screen. So um, if you're interested, if you, you're looking for a spiritual path, this might be one for you. I want to thank you for being here with thank us, you. David. And the blessing. So thank you for being here. And thank you for watching the extra mile.